Well, we are getting a short lived break from the wildfire smoke. Yeah, it's been really nice. You've probably noticed a little bit more of the blue sky today and some bliss for you. Our <laughs> Sophia Bliss joins us now to share some information from a researcher about how we can make informed decisions out in the smoke. Mm -hmm. Morgan and Hunter, fire activity is very high right now. The National Interagency Fire Center data shows this year we're outpacing other active years like 2020 and 2021, which means smoke will likely be an issue for months to come. Wildfire smoke and the resulting poor air quality can have a significant effect on our daily routine when concentrations are high, leading many people to ask, should I still go ahead with my plans today? Think about air quality the same way we think about rain. You wouldn't plan a barbecue uh, if you knew there was a rainstorm coming. And similarly, you should plan your day uh, around the air quality. Dr. Luke Montrose studies environmental toxicology at Colorado State University and previously worked at Boise State as well. A primary focus in his research is the negative health effects of wildfire smoke exposure. When trying to decide what your activity level should be, Dr. Montrose suggests taking your individual health into consideration. Dr. Montrose says some of the health conditions could make you especially vulnerable to smoke exposure. When you exercise, you're actually raising your heart rate and your respiration rate. So not only are you breathing in those particles, you're likely breathing in more volume and forcing them deeper into your lungs. Wildfire smoke is not new to the Northwest, but the amount of it and consistency of it is increasing. About three decade period is when we really started to see a ramp up of wildfire activity. Dr. Montrose says it's not the number of wildfires that's changing, but the amount of acres burned. Over the last three decades, there's been essentially a doubling each decade of acres burned. And so that that is definitely a trend. Um, and, it, and it looks like it's not slowing down. If anything, it's, um, it's increasing in its pace. While we know more acres are burning, Dr. Montrose says the impact of the smoke to people is not fully understood. We have very limited idea of what being exposed long term actually means. When wildfires came onto the scene, it was a single event, fairly rare. That's now changing because it's no longer rare to be exposed. Now we're being exposed, what I would call episodically. So these sort of longer term events that can last weeks or months. And then these occur year over year. Dr. Montrose and some of his colleagues created a call to action for researchers to consider this shift, thinking of smoke as a long-term exposure versus the short term. So that may be something to consider when we all try to make an educated choice about what we're willing to do outside when the smoke is bad. We don't have all the information yet because the research just hasn't caught up. It's really gross to think about, like you were saying, and like he was saying, when you really exert yourself a lot, just how many more particles mm -hmm. you're inhaling. Yes. Yeah. He, he actually wears an air quality sensor on his backpack when he's outside so he wow. can make those calls in real time. Oh, that's a good That's idea. pretty cool. All right, Sophia, thank you.